Joyce Farkas from Joyce Farkas Fluid Art. Um, I wanted to talk this morning about this air compressor <clears throat> and airbrush gun that I use. I have asthma, if you couldn't tell by my raspy voice, and <clears throat> I cannot blow a bloom without nearly passing out. So I tried a blow dryer for a while, which I'm successful with. Um, but then at Christmas time, I thought, you know what? I think I could really use an air compressor. So I asked my husband and best friend. Um, I kind of gave them a list of things I, I'd like to have. And they um, conspired to make sure that I got this one item on my list. So anyway, I want to talk to you about it today. It has been a godsend. I absolutely love it. Um, but there's a couple things I wanted to share with you. So I'm going to put you up on the stand so that I don't have to hold this. And I'm going to explain everything that's here and talk about it. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how I actually use it. So stay with me and let me get you up on the stand. Okay, sorry about that, we're back. Um, so this particular compressor is um, a central pneumatic. Um, I know that this one was purchased at Harbor Freight, but I believe that you can also get it at Tractor Supply and Amazon. Um, I can't, I, because it was a gift, I really don't know the price. I will try to look it up and put it in the video here for you. Um, I want to guess that it was around $130, and it comes with, like I said, this original airbrush um, piece, um, but um, there are different manufacturers. You can get all different types and um, sizes. Um, I wanted something kind of small to be able to sit on my painting table and not take up an enormous amount of space. Um, it's semi-loud, but they're gonna be, because they're, they're compressors. They're, they're gonna circulate that air for you. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, I wanna talk about this piece a little bit. Um, so this comes with all these nice parts, okay? Um, it is considered an air gun, okay? Um, it's it's a double action airbrush gun. I paid around thirty dollars for it, um, and it came with all these parts. Now, some of these parts I'll probably never use. I might use this cord at some point um, <clears throat> as a replacement cord for the cord that came with this machine, um, but. I probably won't even get into these parts, which I don't really care because this is the piece that I care about. Um, this is, uh, you know, if you ever want to do airbrushing, this is the vessel that you put your paint in, any of these. Um, there's three different sizes that, uh, can get it out of the phone here. There's three different sizes that come with the machine if you ever want to do some airbrushing but I probably will never ever use them because I really only want this for fluid art. Um, but let's get back to this little guy. So what I love about this one is this little knob right here. It turns back and forth <clears throat> and um, that changes the airflow coming out of the, the nozzle here. Um, so I'm going to turn the machine on and try to demonstrate. I'm going to move the sh machine away a little bit but basically it has an on off switch right here but i'm going to move it away so it's not terribly loud and right underneath the micro microphone actually you know what i'm going to put it down here on the floor i'm turning it on so i want to kind of demonstrate this little piece right here because that like i said changes your airflow what is really cool about this too is it only blows cold air. So you're not worried about the heat heating up your paint and drying it out faster. So 
basically it's it's a trigger so there you go so if I turn this down you can see that in here that the airflow is not very much but listen so you can hear the difference there <clears throat> So I can control how much force is coming out of this nozzle, which is really awesome. So again, it's just a trigger, and um, that's really all I use is just, I only want this for airflow, which is great for me with my asthma. So it saves me having um, that feeling of, oh my goodness, I think I'm going to pass out moment. Um, and I just use this. So anyway, um, I'm going to stop here and we'll set up to paint and I will get you down and show you how this little gem works. So stick with me. We'll be back in a few. Hello, everybody. I'm back. So we are going to show you how I use this today uh, when I'm doing a painting and in my typical style I am using the um, color cubes inspiration cards um, this is the colors I picked out today so I picked out colors as close as I can get them I don't worry about if I don't get them exact. Um, but for the first color, I am using Golden Peach by TLP. The second color is, again, not an exact match, but it's close. Um, this is Latte by TLP. The third color, I'm using Caramel Drizzle. This one's way off. I don't care. I love caramel drizzle, so I think it'll be pretty. Uh, the fourth color is metallic gold from Matisse. And the fourth color is actually a custom color. I couldn't get very close to this one, but this is a taupe. It's called taupe on the back. Um, so I kind of winged it. Um, it's a mixture of neutral gray by Liquitex, a little pearl white from Amsterdam, and a little bit of caramel drizzle, thinking that would tie in nicely with the caramel drizzle that I'm using for this color. So anyway, there's my colors. <clears throat> and I'm going to work on this six inch tile for a um, coaster. It's already taped off, ready to go. So we're just gonna go ahead, let me put some gloves on, <clears throat> and we'll get started. So as I was saying in another video, I love these color cube cards. Um, they are things that I would have never thought to put together. Just, I had the worst time picking colors. I tended to always pick the same colors over and over because they became favorites. Um, and this is challenging me to use all my tubies and all my piggies and um, to get a little bit more creative with them. Um, so I'm having fun with the color cards and they just, I don't know, it's a bit of a challenge for me. So I am using, um, what is this? PPG Multi Pro. My base. And I'm just going to start laying some colors down here. a little thicker than it probably should be. And 
And what I do, I tend to put things in a thick pile right there in the center because with using an airbrush gun, it's easy to blow down through your pillow. So I lay on the paint pretty heavy. Um, my pet peeve is blowing through to that pillow. I hate it. And you'll see me wreck a million beautiful paintings because the pillow is showing through. So don't hate me. It's just, you know, I, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And for me, I want my paintings to look a certain way. <clears throat> So I do lay down a lot of thick paint and especially right in that center so that I have lots of paint to move around. Now this particular color, and I'll show you in a second. Sometimes I follow exactly what the color cards say. Um, so. A lot of times I'll start with whatever's here on the right and I'll work my way across and I'll follow exactly how they have them. But this one, I wanted to start with a tube paint. So this is my tube paint over here. Actually these two. Um, so I thought maybe that might help anchor my colors a little bit. So I flipped it and I'm doing um, this direction um, with laying down my colors. A lot of times I'll f change that around if I don't like the result or I think I could get a better result with you know moving something around. But I really want that peach to show so I'm trying it on top. So we'll see what happens. Got a few bubbles here to pop. I always try to get the big ones before I spin it out. Sometimes they're stubborn and don't want to pop. There's a lot in there. But I think we're just going to go for it here. All right. Sorry, I forgot to get my cell activator out. This is um, Payne's Gray from Amsterdam. And we'll give it a good stir here since it's sat for several days. So. All right. I'll put my cell activator in the center like we always do. And here we go. I'm going to turn on my machine here. Hopefully it's not too loud. I've got it tucked underneath in hopes that you won't hear it. So anyway, with the air air compressor, let's see, I'm going to get my adjustment here right. You kind of want to come in from the side. If you blow straight down, you're going to go right into that pillow. So I tend to go straight in from the side. Oh, that's not high enough messed with my adjustment here. I know I don't have that right here. Oops. And I kind of spin my spinner as I blow. And like I said, I'm coming in from the side. And there we go. Now, it looks like I may have blown into my pillow a little bit right in here and here. And I know I just told you that I hate that. But look at all those pretty cells. It really looks good. Um, I'm going to probably go ahead and, and spin this out just because I like the shape and I love all the cells. And the colors in this composition um, lend well to that white of the pillow. So I'm going to pick this up and show the camera so you can see it a little better. Hopefully you can see how pretty that turned out. I'm going to 
turn it too much because it'll, it'll run. But it looks pretty good. So you, as you can see, with the air gun, you can get the pretty petals. Um, sometimes I just blow right, you know, right around in a circle and spin my wheel, and it just makes a nice uh, round shape. But um, today you can see I got the petals. Um, you see some bubbles over there while we're waiting for that center to come back good. Got some bubbles here I'm going to try to take care of. I don't know about you, but I hate bubbles. They drive me nuts. But there's a good many in this composition here I'm seeing. Sometimes you can cover them up nice and other times they just look freaking ugly. Anyway, let's give it our spin and see. Whoa. Spin and see. Yeah, for some reason. There we go. I hate when it's off center like that because it throws those cells off center. All right, it's looking pretty good. It's pretty. It's a nice color combination. And I love the peach. Peach looks really nice. And I'm going to give some of these sides a little extra help here that paint this should help it oh it's looking good just making sure all my edges are covered it's coming down very nicely just set this off So I will admit that I don't collect my runoff anymore. I have, I'll show you, three of these bottles with my runoff paint. That turns out to be these really pretty colors of gray. I sometimes use it as a base paint when I know I'm going to have a lot of paint to cover it up with. But I have found that it's usually full of pieces and parts and I have to strain it. And um, a lot of times because it's all different kinds of paints mixed together, um, different recipes, all kinds of different things are in it. I find that it mostly ruins my paintings. So I know it's wasteful. But I find that my paintings come out much nicer and I don't have as many problems with having to repaint and repaint and repaint if I just don't use it. So, like I say, I've got three of these collected, full up, ready to go if I can find another project that it's safe to use it with. So, um, I just don't save it anymore. Um, I don't need hundreds of those containers. Sometimes I'll watch my runoff and I'll use that. Um, I'll save it and use it for jewelry or magnets, um, which is something I make but don't sell. I make those as gifts to anybody that buys a piece. So if someone buy something from my shop, I will send them a gift with their painting of a piece of jewelry or a magnet. Um, a couple of bubbles have popped and shown my pillow in a couple places. Just 
do not make me happy. Let's see some more pellet, uh, bubbles that are gonna pop. <laughs> They uh, reveal pretty things, and sometimes they don't. So anyway, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to give it one last spin here, just to make sure I got enough paint off. But that is really pretty. Got a couple of bubbles here. Now you can, I don't like to always do this, but you can take your your, your compressor gun and just do a way back spray and pop your bubbles. That way you can go ahead and address all those bubbles before you put it over on your drying rack and come back to it a day later and see all these terrible bubbles all over it that you now probably want to cover up. So I would rather address them now and cover them up than later. I don't, I try not to ever torch it. That would definitely get your bubbles. Um, but I've always heard that you never touch torch a bloom, so I listen, and I don't torch my blooms. Oh, that was bad. I have to spin that one again. Let's see if I can get rid of that. Um, but anyway, I think this is pretty much done. Let me give it one last spin so I can end this video not have it be tremendously long. But I'm loving this color palette. It's very pretty. It's kind of beachy. But there she is, all done. And I didn't have to use my breath um, for this at all. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please uh, give me a like and a follow. Share with your friends. And... We will talk to you next time. Bye for now.